A film can be bad for any number of reasons. The casting, the budget, interference from the studio, letting Michael Bay within 10,000 miles of it. But at its core, there's one thing that can make or break any story. The script. And so, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my new segment. Script Fix It. What I'm going to do in this segment is to explain how a show can be improved, or possibly even saved, by changes to the basic script. Nothing to do with casting or directorial influence or budget. So, let us begin with our first victim, I mean film. Ladies and gentlemen, Superman 3. Gus Gorman, played by Richard Pryor, is a ex-con, a minor thief, who has just got out of prison and is having trouble finding a job. Taking a course at uh, computer programming, he finds he has an affinity for it, ends up working for a company which he embezzles from, but the owner decides that his skills are very useful, and he's put in charge of using his skills to reprogram computers to perform various acts such as reprogramming a satellite to change the weather in Colombia, and various other aspects in order to improve the man's wealth and ensure he doesn't go back to prison. During the course of this story, Superman, as Clark Kent, is attending his high school reunion back in Smallville and reconnecting with his old girlfriend, Lana Lang, and a lot of slapstick comedy occurs due to Richard Pryor attempting to be funny but being completely out of place within this movie. As a result of attempting to use uh, artificial kryptonite, with the unknown factor being replaced by cigarette tar, Superman becomes evil. Well, in the sense that he does naughty things, like straightening the Tower of Pisa or blowing out the Olympic torch just before he's placed with, within the, 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 the Grand Brazier. He is ultimately, uh, ultimately faces off against his evil self, metaphorically splitting in two, and battling between the amoral Superman and the good righteous Clark Kent, ultimately regaining his full self and heading off to stop the bad guys. These bad guys are headquartered at a giant artificial intelligence computer which Gus has managed to create. How, we don't know exactly. He just brought his stuff down on a bunch of pieces of paper and decided to build it because what the heck. Battles the computer and ultimately defeats it. And while the bad guys go off to prison, Gus is taken to a coal mining facility where Superman gets a piece of coal so he turns it into a diamond as part of the romantic subplot, and Gus is left behind to work with that company's computer and have his new start on life. The end. Now that we've established the rather unfortunate plot, let's work on how we can fix it. This film was intended to have a much lighter tone than the previous two films. And unfortunately, it suffers for that. There is a great deal of slapstick comedy. The opening sequence, upon which the opening credits are played almost in a half subdued alone, half of the screen not going to embarrassed to be there style, is a five minute long slapstick sequence involving a series of catastrophic events cascading along the street in Metropolis because of one woman being ogled. Plus, of course, Richard Pryor's attempts to be funny. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Richard Pryor's stuff. It's just he works best in an actual comedy with other people, such as his excellent work with Gene Wilder. In this, his routines seem completely out of place, and his trademark style of nervous fumbling really doesn't gel well with the rest of the story. So the first thing I'd do is I'd cut down on the comedy considerably, removing a lot of the scenes that are just painful to sit through. A lot of the elements in Smallville drag down this film. There is a subplot involving a drunken asshole who's Linus' ex-boyfriend who's attempting to get, get back with her. There is, uh, well, quite frankly, a lot of unpleasant stuff where Gorman goes to uh, Smallville in order to access c computers through a uh, ag agricultural station uh, link-up, and basically a lot of really unwelcome comedy and cringeworthy moments. What I do is I trim those down considerably to the extent we just have the relationship between Clark 
Christopher Reeve actually acting like a nice little balance between the bumbling Clark from Metropolis and the larger than life Superman, making him the most human that he was in these films. And just basically keeping it that way. Clark had a chance to finally be himself and relax with his old friend, and Lana learning how she needs to take her son and go someplace better than the small town of Smallville where she's basically been trapped since sort of her marriage ended. That I think would really improve matters and give the actress a much better chance. Because when I watched it, I was so cringed by a lot of the elements surrounding the Smallville scenes, she became almost completely lost. And there's tiny little bits of good stuff in there that could have done a lot better if she hadn't been so overwhelmed by all of the so-called comedy. Superman needs to be a lot more evil in this movie. Make him an actual threat. For example, there's one scene where the United Nations vo votes to actually censure Superman, despite the fact he's not doing anything more than stuff that's basically just sort of naughty, like straightening the, the Tower of Pisa, thus uh, removing the town's, to town's tourist trade. Oh my, how terrible! He needs to do more evil things. There was one point where he basically attacks an oil tanker, which is attempting to leave an area that Gus has programmed the ship's computers to constantly uh, go in a circle, but he just fixes that thing in any way. Having to do some things that actually make the United Nations afraid of him, make him seem like an actual threat. Of course, as he actually comes to being a potential threat, is at the end of his evil sequence where he's in a bar getting drunk and basically just flicking peanuts at mirrors. Make him evil, make him a threat, improve the element of the character. The supercomputer feels almost like an afterthought. This is what I do to actually make it better. When Gus is first discovered in his embezzlement and the bad guy decides to use him, I would have it so that the supercomputer has already been built, or almost completely built, and Gus's savant skills are actually used to help make it work properly. He'll be able to actually access the computer system network directly from there, or from a link from the bad guy's offices, thus giving us more scenes with the computer, since we've already got the, the set for it anyway. And the more interactions with it, the more self-aware the computer becomes, thus causing it to become a looming threat and a growing problem in the background until it finally turns on its creators and tries to do evil things at the end of the film. Instead of just saying, hmm, we've made Superman good again, we've had a lot of bad comedy, we need a climax. Let's just stick in that giant, giant supercruiter we, we pulled out of our asses. So we have a lot less unfunny comedy, which would unfortunately shorten down prior scenes, but he wasn't really doing very well in this film anyway, being primarily a character that seems to be completely out of step with the rest of the movie. We've got a more human romance with Lana and more of a reason for her to actually leave Smallville and go to Metropolis than just because she felt like it. We've got more of a threat of Superman in the sense that he's actually doing evil things, not necessarily involving loss of life, but still something better than just being naughty. And we've got a subtle and growing threat of the supercomputer in the background until it becomes an important threat at the end of the film. So that was Script Fix It for Superman 3. What do you think? Would this make a good or a bad film in your estimation? Let me know in the comments below, and also let me know if you think of any other films you'd like me to review in this format. I'm Sam Kennedy Critic, and I'll see you next time.